All right, so the wax wings have just been seen in Dumblain, which is about 15 minutes north of where I'm staying. So gonna go have another shot at that. I've been back to Dumblain a couple of times to look for the wax wings, but I've been unsuccessful. But that's mostly been because I haven't had enough time to really look. So now I got a good few hours, so I'm gonna head up there and just wander the streets where they've been seen last. Here we are in Dumblain, and I drove up the way that kind of the area that had been seen, and I could see there was quite a few rowan trees in people's gardens. So it looks like that's the way we're gonna have to shoot today. <laughs> it's gonna be a bit awkward pointing my camera into people's gardens, but hopefully it'll be all right. I didn't see them on the way up here, but there was way too many places that could have been there. And they probably go back and forth from different trees. From my experience with watching uh, waxwings, it seems like they often um, spend most of their time in higher trees where they kind of keep a watch out. And then every now and then they'll just pounce on a rowan tree or something like that, pick as many berries as they can and then they, before they fly off again. Uh, I was probably working out for them as a kind of a safety safety thing. They don't want to stay too long feeding because they're a bit more exposed lower down. Since I've already done a video on wax wings quite recently, um, I wasn't actually going to do another one. But today we got quite a nice overcast day. So today I wanted to go for something that's called a high key image. Um, at least that's that's my idea. It, it all depends a little bit on the circumstances of where I wh when I'm there and every now and then there's a bit of light coming through But the idea is to really go for a high key image and really make it, you know, just blend into a white background and surroundings uh, While they're picking maybe some yellow or red or orange berries So that's the idea of today uh, create something a bit different and hopefully I get a chance to do that. We just gotta find them first. So, let's go. I've just checked Google Maps. Um, along with the app that I've been using and it looks like there's a park down here So hopefully they're in the park and I can just go in there It'd be a bit less awkward than trying to shoot into somebody's garden As I go I'm kind of scanning all these high trees here to see if there's any flocks of kind of small medium-sized birds all right, Hopefully there's some kind of entrance to this park around here right past that. Alright, let's hope this is it. I'm just having to wander around this park. Um, there was 20 of them seen here just a couple of hours ago. And I don't really see where they would be feeding yet. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some rowan trees. Trees with berries in them. Um, the rowan trees are favorite. So it could be in people's gardens around the park or in the park itself. Or it could just be that they use some high trees for like a vantage point and um, for safety. So uh, it doesn't really say if they're feeding here or not in the, in the app. So. I'll just have a wander around and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see something. I think I just saw another guy with a big lens over there, so that, that's a good sign, right? All right, that must be the tree right there. Now the tree with berries have almost turned white. That's the only tree around here. Alright, only been there for about 20 minutes or so and they showed up really quick. Amazing. And they're just in the tree right in front of me here. So I put myself just up against these bushes here. 
and just waiting for them to come back. And I'm experimenting with really high ice, so to really go for that really high exposure and just make everything around it white. Uh, that really helps for where they're landing. Uh, if they come somewhere else where I have a better background, I might go, I might tone it down a little bit, turn it down a little bit. I feel quite lucky now, the waxwings have come back and forth and they come back to this rowan tree every now and then, feed for about 15-20 seconds, really fast, really manic, and then they just off into some of the bigger trees up here. So I'm getting surrounded by swans here. I got some red wings and other thrushes coming up here as well. They're quite high up in the tree though, so I like them a little bit further down. But I'm gonna walk around to the other side of the tree now and just try and get a little bit different perspective. So taking quite a few images from this side. So I wanna keep trying a little bit more and the wax one's actually disappeared quite far away. There's a robin right there. Amazing how robins are just not scared at all sometimes. So I've got quite a few images from this side. I'd like to try a new perspective, uh, try a slightly different um, setup. So I'm going to walk around the other side here. And the waxwings have been here in the area for quite a long time, but just now they actually flew off, so they might not even come back. I'm just going to have to wait and see. That's quite handy. This is the only rowan tree here, so we kind of know where they're all going to show up. And it's the only place where they feed. So I'm thinking maybe somewhere on this side. And I got the tree just behind me here. So I'm just going to put this down, try and warm my hands a bit, and get ready for hopefully the next next time they come around. Amazing. I'm really getting to take my time here. They're a little bit high up in the tree, it's unfortunate, but other than that, it's great conditions. And basically, what I'm going for here to create the kind of high, high key images is that I'm basically I'm dialing in an overexposure about two stops. Uh, I'm using full manual, so I'm just putting that using my ISO to increase that trying to keep a relatively high shutter speed so that I can freeze the action because they're a bit quick as well grabbing the berries and trying to throw them down so I'm ranging about 500th to 640th of a second shutter speed and that seems to be working pretty good for most of my images and then my ISO is ranging from about 1600 to 2000 or even higher when it comes really really dark clouds and stuff like that above and really just going to get that overexposure in, get everything, isolate the birds by just throwing everything else into white.
what I found that works best for me is that I don't take an image right away. I wait and see where the birds are going to land and I try and aim for the birds that land lowest in the tree or just are a bit more isolated. There's not too many branches around so a bit more on the outside of the tree so that I can really isolate the birds with just like a few of the berries and stuff around. Here they come again. So now coming back and doing this again and again, it's really kind of fine tuning how I'm shooting. And I like to take a step back every now and then. Not a, just a, <laughs> um, not an actual step back, but just put my camera down even while they're there, just to see if there's a better bird. Because sometimes they'll move about and I can focus too much on one bird and it might be a little bit too high, so I'm not getting the lower angle. Um, or it might just be a lot of clutter around it. So unless I have a perfect bird on a branch that I really like the image, then every now and then I'll just peek up uh, from my camera and just see if there's any other birds that have landed further down or maybe on a branch that's a bit more isolated and doesn't have a lot of clutter around it. And then I'll try and aim for that instead. Uh, and they're so quick, so you have, to, you have to move really quick. But that's what I've kind of found works for me because sometimes you can get too preoccupied by photographing a bird just because it's landed there and you're aiming for it but you don't really have that much time to to kind of to fine tune your framing and fine tune your composition so it's good to every now and then have a look and just see if there's a better if, if a bird has landed on a better branch and started feeding there and you can take advantage of that uh, they're up in a tree just behind me here um, so I'm hoping they're gonna land again soon but that's probably gonna be it then I'm gonna give it a little bit more time and then I'm gonna head back I'm getting a bit, a bit hungry need the bathroom and all that stuff so yeah a little bit more time spent here I spent a good few hours here now and then uh, get back home All right, that's looking like it might be it for today. I've had them around here a good few times, but it's been probably 40 minutes since I last had them here. So I'm getting a bit chilly and just really need the bathroom. So um, I think I'm just gonna head, head home now. It's been a great day though, and I really got to experiment with some high key images and um, really just push the ISO up and you know push my exposure up to really get those really bright images and I really I really enjoy that look so it's definitely something I'm going to be trying a lot more of uh, in the future if you haven't seen any of my videos before my name is Aspen and my channel is all about wildlife photography and pretty much every week I take you guys with me on the field for some wildlife photography so thank you guys so much for joining me out here today I'll see you next week